There it is. Whoa. Streams being live streamed. Meeting is underway. Hello, everybody. Welcome aboard. It's time for the SBAU Astro Hour. That came up from Tom Totten, our big webmaster, gave us that name. It's for the Santa Barbara Astronomical Unit, and it's for fans of astronomy and telescopes, astrophysics, and it's based right here in Santa Barbara, California, during the extended, of course, pandemic. We're coming to you live with our weekly Zoom cast from our homes, ladies and gentlemen. We are one week away from a half year doing this. This is episode number 25 for Monday morning, August 16th, 2021. And doggone, we're going to talk about a bunch of things today. Let me, before I introduce you to the crowd, give you some of the stuff we're going to talk about. I counted no less than four variable stars we may be mentioning. One of them is called Mira. And a couple of spacecraft just sped by Venus within a day of each other the last week. Uh, both of them connected to NASA and the uh, ESA, European Space Agency. But they're on the way to the sun. Nevertheless, one of them got down 300 miles above the planet. Uh, we got binary systems, we got uh, the central region of the Milky Way, we got the night sky, and on tap to talk about it is our beloved Santa Barbara Astronomical Unit President, uh, Mr. Jerry Wilson. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Pat Forgy are still quarantined, I guess, but happily. Uh, up in the upper left, uh, my corner anyway, they jury rigged these pictures, is uh, our Tom Totten webmaster, former president. How are you, Tom? You're doing a great job. Outreach coordinator Chuck McPartland over there, who is married to Pat, uh, as is Jerry Wilson. He's married to a Pat. And Tom's beautiful wife is a uh, artist by the name of uh, Suzanne. Chuck is trying to do outreach, but they're, I guess, preempting them with bears. <laughs> you want to tell everybody that or is that just as well oh no i it's just it's just a screw up where we showed up you know we drove i don't know how 100 miles or whatever and showed up at lopez lake and uh oh that's and the then the ranger said oh no tonight's talk is on bears and oh, uh, so well so you, you, talk about about ursa major. you talk about ursa major yeah ursa. That's... <laughs> well, that gentleman talking is uh retired i guess tom Wettermore, uh yep. our spau newsletter editor uh taught science at westmont how are you tom Wettermore? fine thank you ron good Very morning fair enough. and here is bruce murdoch longtime active member president of the santa barbara theater organ society married to bonnie how you doing bruce I'm doing incredible. How about you? I don't have a telescope, but that's only because I got too many trees around me and I'm downtown. Okay. I wouldn't be able to see a damn thing anyway. I can't even Light see pollution, the rocket. Yeah. I can't even see the rocket launches from the newly renamed Vandenberg Spaceport. Mm -hmm. uh, or no, Space well, Force. In the Barron's case, I think it's tree pollution. It is. It's terrible. But that's okay. I could, you know, I, I, I don't know the stuff like you do. And I'm here, even though I'm vice president, to ask a lot of questions. Now, Totten, we can take comments or questions on their YouTube feed, can't we? Which is live. Yeah, that would be at the bottom. Yes. I've never done that myself, but people can. We might even have Tim Crawford, who runs our Tuesday night uh, webcast on telescope making on board. You never know. He sometimes may join us. Shall we do the night sky or what would you like to talk about? Variable stars or let's get Venus out of the way. Mr. President, your choice. Sure, go down to Venus. I uh, included I'm... a couple of video clips for uh, Tom to run. Okay. Well, the addresses are down there. We'll talk about it as he calls those up, because uh, this is fascinating stuff. One is the ESA mission Solar Orbiter, yeah, launched in collaboration with NASA, flew by last Monday, the 9th, uh, about 5,000 miles up. And... Um, then I can't even read my, what the heck does that word mean? Uh, Bepi Colombo? Oh, that's Bepi, the name? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's a joint, uh, that was the second one, the ESA Japanese mission, JAXA, went by the next day and flew above Venus's clouds um, about 310 miles. And I guess they took some measurements, but they weren't designed to go there, were they? Here we go. Oh, no, they were just passing by. That's a heck of a crescent. Yeah. So it's all oh, that's the side. shadow. What's the shadow? That's a shadow of, of Mercury in front of the moon or whatever. The Venus, I mean, in front of the moon on the no, sun. No, no, no. no, no that's, this is, that's, that's just Venus. That's coming in on well, Venus. 
Wow, and, that's really a crescent, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's probably an atmospheric effect. It's got such a thick atmosphere. Oh, yeah. Because you can see it click, you know, you can see it almost all the way around. Yeah. There's right, a lot there's... of layer that makes it look real big. Do we know which of these two uh, speeding orbiters took this picture, this video, the solar orbiter, ESA? That means it would have been launched from what? Northern South America on the coast? Chuck? Yeah, they usually launch from British Guiana, or I'm sorry, from French Guiana. But but we're tied in with them? What would we do? What would NASA do? Well, it's instruments on the spacecraft. Oh, I see. All right. And they go by Venus for what reason? I happen to know, but I think you guys can explain it better. There's a They're heading for the sun. They use gravitational assist to actually slow it down. To slow it down, so it yep. won't get sucked. It, so they won't get sucked. In. Look at this. What are these pictures of? Well, what if they're going? going too fast when they go by the sun, then the sun will fling them way out. So they want them to stay in a, a closer to a, a less elliptical orbit. Okay. Now neither of these missions is what we're, what's called the Parker probe, is it? That's no. a third no to the sun, which NASA claims that one's that already out there doing its highly elliptical orbit. Okay, and it's inside the orbit of Mercury? I don't recall where that is now. Okay. At least part of it must be. <laughs> no. Because it does get pretty close. Tom, can you show the other video for the Beppe Colombo? Beppe Colombo and his orchestra. Oh, there we go. There. This yeah. is the one that came real close. Wow. That's far away. But you can see it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It starts out real close. Matter of fact, it fills the frame. Well, the life of me, I can't imagine how they get that right. I guess it's ultimate calculus. Uh, this is remember this 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 navigation is all based on math and physics developed in 1660 or first published. Which Newtonian was calculus. Physics. That was calculus, right, Sir Isaac? Yeah, well, gravitation. Calculus is the math of what changing variables, speeds, increasing or decreasing, things like that. Angles it's kind of like that, yeah. What is this? It's just what happens when you time step down to zero. You know, it's a uh, you're doing infinitesimal uh, samples. It is a thing that you're looking for. I feel, like a, I feel like a Strauss waltz right now. Anybody want to lead? Look at this. <laughs> Anybody want to lead? Math calculus is the. Um, there's two forms of it, differential and integral calculus. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They deal with um, functions instead of before that you had to make everything a straight line because you could calculate things based on extrapolating straight lines. Calculus lets you handle complex curves and get accurate curvature at each point or uh, accurate areas under a curve or inside of a solid. It's a good it, way. It was developed simultaneously by Isaac Newton and Leibniz. I forget Le Leibniz's first name. Incidentally, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Baron Ron Heron. We used to do this on the radio. It's now uh, yeah. way better because we can see things. My, my question is this. If they're off in just a, a mile or two or a kilometer to speak European, yeah. that would change the whole trajectory, wouldn't it? Just a few hundred feet, I would it think. It does, but their navigation is very good. They usually hit it right on. And if it were off, they'd fire a jet a little bit and put oh, it I see. They on the correct orbit. Okay. Uh, called a mid-course correction. All right. But like in the case of Mars, the last couple went up there. They didn't need to do any mid-course correction. They just let it coast. Wow. What's oh, the difference? It's Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. <laughs> Wilhelm Leibniz, yeah, old Bill. Anyway, the Baron is vice president of the Santa Barbara Astronomical Unit. Which may never meet personally again. Oh, I think we'll get back to it. I hope so. God bless. Now, what's the purple line? Is Which one? Is that Beppe Colombo and his orchestra? Yes. Say, <laughs> Colombo and his orchestra. Strange, strange Italian uh, roughneck uh, detective wore a dirty overcoat. Unfortunately, they don't say what the green dot is, and they don't say where the sun is, but I assume the sun's at the center of that circle. This, this well, one is one of going around Mercury. Is. Oh, this a is time? going around Mercury? Ah, this is Mercury. So that's that's future orbit. You can see the trajectory around Mercury. Okay. Oh, it's a little in the middle is Mercury. And it's being used to slow it down, not speed it up. Oh, no, passing Venus is made 
it's to slow it down. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, this so one does not have a good explanation, but. Uh, otherwise, it would what go get back into the outer solar system or go into the sun? No, it would come back to where we are, but it would pass by the sun uh, fairly close. The sun could speed it up, of course, and throw it way out. And our space program save hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of fuel by having the planet assist with its gravity. Well, yeah, or you'd have to have a huge spacecraft with lots of fuel to do that. Yeah. With rockets. Yeah, you don't just point at the view screen and say, you know, go let's there. Go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Engage. Yeah, well, Engage. Thank you. As I mentioned, NASA did send another probe just to do, I guess this, these two are also destined for the sun only, not Mercury. And not, and I not, think Colombo is, is heading to Mercury. Oh, it's it's a Mercury. Is it going to yeah. orbit? The it's going planet? to. It's going to. Okay. Yeah. Well, interesting. Solar Orbiter and Bepi Colombo's double Venus flyby. That was last week. Just happened to fall on that. I wonder how close they were launched together. I don't think either one of them took a picture of the other. Yeah. <laughs> well, one was 5,000 miles. The other was 300 and something miles above the surface of that nasty planet we'll never really land on we might land on it but we're not going to stay there okay interesting stuff i hope we yeah. get a report from parker someday i'd like to know what the status of that is i guess it's got a similar orbit to juno the one that's going in big loops around what every 54 days around jupiter it's another day another oh, for for juno yeah but uh, parker goes in a big ellipse you analogous uh going around the sun I got you. It can't stay as close as it'd like to the sun for an indefinite period of time. It gets too hot. Yeah, it's pretty hot in there. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of radiation. It's crazy. It's like we're going in that direction, maybe. Mr. President, what I, could I get you to comment just for a couple of minutes here on Lana Kia? Because you sent that to us several weeks ago. And before I let that die, I don't know if we if this is a major subject. It's probably the biggest things in the universe that we see or can see or determine that are out there. Strings of galaxies, of which the Milky Way is one. And uh, it's a, what is it, a Hawaiian name? We've given our string? Yeah. I think it is. Yeah, Mani Akea. It's, it's Mani just, Akea. The, you know, how there's galaxy clusters and then there's super clusters. And this is like a mega cluster. It's a mega. cluster of clusters. Yeah. Okay, somehow from a far distance, it would look like a bunch of spider webs inside the. the attic. They, uh, yeah, the picture you saw that had all the lines all over it was where things are headed. It's not just where things are. And here's an image here that, that Tom yeah. has a static where image. Where are we? Uh, right there. Okay. The little, no, the little blue thing says local group. So we're down where the little blue bit is. Oh, a little to the left of that. There you go. And that would be uh, Andromeda and us and all these little satellite galaxies. That's yeah. what we're looking at. That's the local cluster. And the local cluster, the members are all blue shifted with respect to each other. That is, we're moving together. Toward each uh, other. Yeah, it's toward each other. The, the gravity is the dominant force here. Okay. So these other, that looks like a big X in a way. Uh, those are filaments, sort of massive um, what is what is the, the name for these? They're not. Are they clusters? Is it is it? Would a galaxy cluster be a good? Yeah, there's the Virgo Virgo two groups or clusters. The Virgo super clusters listed there. Okay. A lot of common things that we see: the Southern super cluster, the Eridanus cluster. Okay. Um, it looks to me like actually a, a running dog with a head on the right, tail out to the left, and two <laughs> legs sticking yeah, down. Yeah. Or, or a kind of distorted pie. Yeah. <laughs> but now the dark areas at the top and bottom and left and right, are those voids? Those are voids. Wow. Big, vast parts of space where there are no galaxies. Yeah, space is, is looks like on a, a larger scale, it looks like a big network. But now most of it's flying away except for the individual star club or stars, uh, uh, galaxies that we're coming together, right? We're going to yeah. be a bunch of dots Within each within each supercluster, there will be local clusters that are coming together. Okay. Yeah. Would it be fair to call that the war between dark matter and dark energy in a way? I don't know. 
Well, dark dark matter is pulling this together. We can't see that, but dark energy is just doing just the opposite. It's pushing the universe apart, or is, is it making the new space time continuum that expands the universe? I or think I those are open questions. We don't really understand the nature of dark matter. It's really a label for our ignorance, whatever <laughs> it is. That's a good way of putting it, yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson calls it dark gravity. Dark gravity, that's fine. Yeah, that's because fine. We, we don't, the thing I don't understand if is if it's a form of gravity that we can't see, then how can they say it doesn't interact? No, it does interact with gravity. It does not interact with any kind of Coulomb uh, interaction. There's no charge. Whatever dark energy, dark matter is, it's not charged matter. It can't emit or absorb light. It does and not it interact with to, light except by bending the light. And it gravity. doesn't seem to interact with itself much either. Right. Itself? Yeah. Wow. They, here's, here's an astounding fact for you. Um, it's believed that dark matter is its own antiparticle. Well, that was going to be my question. Does it have anything to do with antimatter and regular pro-matter? There's very no. little antimatter out there. No, nobody knows. Nobody knows yet. Yeah, I like, and Jerry, I liked your definition of dark matter. It's uh, unknowium. Yeah, unknowium. <laughs> yeah. Or dark uh, gravity. Well, that's fascinating stuff. And Lana Kia, why did we name it that? It's a Jap uh, Japanese. It's a Hawaiian, right? Hawaiian. Well, I, I have to say I was not consulted. Okay, but it has something, it means something like grouping or whatever. Shall we in do the ones? Hawaiian in the Hawaiian alphabet or the Hawaiian language? <clears throat> they only have sixteen characters, and you pronounce every letter. So, like N I I H A U, which is the island off Kauai, it's D E H A O. So you pronounce both eyes. D E. So la, la, he is well, that's just there. okay. So and in Lana, uh, I don't have it up, so I can't see it, but. Uh, Lana Kea or Lan Lani Akea. Akea. Yeah. You have to pronounce every letter in the word. You guys want to have a real fun laugh? Uh, go on YouTube and call up John Prine's song, uh, Let's Talk Dirty in Hawaiian. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, got, I played it on the radio. It's it's clean enough you can play, but you get the dirty intended him just using those 16 letters over and over again. <laughs> Fascinating stuff. Well, I know uh, Mr. Bruce Murdoch has been out with his telescope and possibly Tom Whittemore. Who knows uh, who's out there? But uh, apparently special show from Jupiter's moons is on tap this week. We also have Mira, the feature of tomorrow. Mercury and Venus uh, are featured Wednesday. I think Mercury and Mars are going to get together, aren't they? Uh, in opposition later in the week. Jupiter comes back. There's asteroid 43, uh, which is Ariadne. And then the weekends up with our moon and uh, then Saturn's moons. So there's a big light show going on, even though Jupiter, this is what I don't understand. How do you see anything when Jupiter is in opposition way over there? It's far enough from us on this side of the sun. It's not that it's so far. It's, it's, it's orbit is closest to our orbit, even though it may not right. be at the closest point. But we're looking at it straight on. It actually is quite large. It's about 50 arc seconds across, as I remember. But the last Friday, it was very clear. I, you know, it yeah. was stunning. You could see multiple lines on it, <clears throat> all kinds of features. All right. Now, that was up at the top of uh, uh, West Camino Cielo. The big action for today, apparently on, on Monday, is the um, plane of Jupiter's moon's orbits are intersecting the Earth or did for a short while this morning. And so there's a likelihood that moons will pass in front of each other. Actually, it's it's it lasts longer than just a short amount of time. It's been for for weeks at least because okay. there's a um, iota. Some of the iota people, the occultation people, do these mutual occultations of Jupiter's moons. Mm, okay, and that's that's there's several months where they do those campaigns. So it, it's not just a very short. Okay, thing. but the pictures that are shown there, um, which Tom is showing, the uh, first one. You can see that Europa and Io are close together out there, and Callisto and Ganymede are very close together farther out. And the next picture is take is a, a, a graphic for four hours later, and you see that Io and Europa have changed position, mm -hmm. giving the chance of one passing in front of the other. Um, at one point, they would merge together. And Callisto and, and Ganymede have also switched position farther out. 
So um, these are a little offset, but during this time period, and I guess earlier this morning, there were a number of uh, potential transits and occultations of moons. Mm. So be, but because that was this morning before we had this broadcast, I didn't put them in the... Those are the heavy four, aren't they? That everybody usually sees when they lock Yeah, they're in. the easy four. Okay. Some people with very good vision, uh, naked eye, claim that they can see the all four when they're spread out. That's they're, yeah. if they're like this, you're even more likely to see two moons. You know, no, given moon given moon human visual acuity, your your only chance is maybe Callisto and maybe maybe Ganymede at, at their max uh, elongation separation. Yeah, yeah. Well, can you can you put those four in uh, their order from the uh, from Jupiter? Isn't Io the closest, and then yeah, uh, Enceladus, and are there... Europa, Europa. <laughs> This is a perspective view, you know, Europa may be way in front of Vio in our plane towards us. Yeah. So that's why they don't always appear in the same order out from Jupiter. Okay, I understand that, but Jupiter has what, 60 something moons? Where are they? Are they yeah, but 79. 79, so there's gotta be several we don't see. That several, are just yeah. Oh, they're, they're tiny. <clears throat> they only found them with spacecraft. We couldn't see them from Earth. Well, some were discovered telescopically, but yeah. oh yeah, yeah, right. But uh, all of them, I think Morris, most of the recent ones <clears throat> have been more from the uh, from the, the satellites we sent out there. Yeah, or telescopic with yeah, Hubble. right. Oh you know? yeah, 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 Hubble, right. So those seventy-three are scattered clear out there, yeah. and they're there, and they're usually on the ecliptic, the same ecliptic as these that we're looking at as. Well, as maybe well, the rings of Jupiter. Do you mean the ecliptic or do you mean on Jupiter's equatorial plane? Well, are they on the equatorial ecliptic of Jupiter? Well, it's it's not an equatorial <laughs> ecliptic of Jupiter. The ecliptic is our plane around the sun. Right. And then there's Jupiter's equatorial plane. And the big ones are on that. But if you take all these other irregular moons of Saturn, they're just scattered all over the place. It looks like a... Um, like an elliptical galaxy or like a globular cluster. They just orbit in all kinds of different uh, orientations. And it covers a huge patch of the sky if you map all 79. Okay, but even though Jupiter has some rings, unlike Saturn, you're not gonna see them, are you? Right, they're very close to Jupiter relative to this picture. Okay, interesting, fascinating. By the way, both, both those graphics were generated by a, a very nice app on for, for your iPad called uh, Jupiter Moons. Here, Tom brought up the multi moons here. Oh, wow. okay. How many colors do we see? Three <laughs> blue, orange, red. See, Callisto is way inside here, so a lot of these moons are pretty far from Jupiter. And Io, in case nobody knows, is a, a little rocky volcanic uh, going through uh, incredible surges of. Almost like an epileptic fit that planet or that moon gets. Jeez. An interesting thing about all these other moons here is that some of them are in retrograde orbit relative to Jupiter. And so really? you, you have some groups that seem to have formed from collisions of moons, some prograde and some retrograde. So how many moons are shown there? It's probably it's like all a bunch. I don't think it's all 79, though. Wow, it is a bunch. I didn't realize the names are scattered all over them. They're way out there, though. Oh, here, here it says prograde orbits are colored blue, while retrograde orbits are colored red. Yeah, now, we have a spacecraft somewhere in there, too, doing a strange high loop every 54 days. That's not pictured, but you suppose it'll go outside to the orbits of those moons? Um, it's probably within the orbit of, of some of those far out moons there. Which moons are those, Tom? Those little, those little ones? Yeah. Those are... Some little tiny one says Thebe. Oh, well, that's Mars. No, that's and, not Mars. Almathea. The Almathea fifth largest was moon. discovered telescopically from the Earth. I thought Mars's moons were Phoebe and Danos. This no, Phobos and Deimos. Phobos and Deimos. Deimos and Phobos, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. Phoebe is a different word. I'm sorry. Fear and trembling, literally. <laughs> that's literally the death star. Yeah. That was Io. <laughs> wow, fascinating stuff. And this is just Monday, which is today. Some of the stuff's already gone behind us. Uh, observers in the central section of the U.S. 
uh, get the best view. The whole thing is an angle. Uh, way out in Europe, I guess they don't get the same view we do. It makes that much um, difference. You need to explain what we're looking at. <laughs> These are discovery photos for the various moons. Which ones? Well, uh, here it says Eupori. Uh, strange name. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that a planet or a star uh, we're looking at? That's one of the moons of Jupiter. Oh, it is? That bright? No, that little thing with the, the dashes on it. The thing that's moving. Oh, oh, I see. I got you right. And and Jupiter is the lit up star-like object? No, at the top? no, those are background stars. Oh, I see. All right. So this is an actual photograph through a telescope. And the thing that looks like Sauron's eye is just overexposure, saturation. <laughs> and where is Jupiter in that picture? Jupiter is far out of the picture. Yeah. It's not even in the picture. All right. Wow. Well, if you say we can see it clear over the, on the other side of the sun, I'll have to buy it. It's hard. It's to not on the other side of the sun, Ron. It's an opposition, which means it's opposite the sun in our sky. Mm -hmm. So it rises when the sun sets and it sets mm -hmm. when the sun rises. So it's so, right overhead around the middle of the night. So it's definitely on the same side of the sun as we are. Yeah. Really? That's what yeah. opposition means. Yeah. Yes. I swear I got that totally wrong. I yeah, you're, you're thinking means, of superior conjunction and inferior com conjunction. Yeah, which only oh, applies yeah. to the inner right. planets. Yeah, for, for inferior conjunction, yeah. Right. If you go down to Friday, you can see a similar clustering of Saturn's moons. Oh, yeah. Shall we Taken jump from uh, Saturn's yeah. moons app. Uh, Friday the 20th, end of the week, our moon passes four degrees south of Saturn at 3 p.m. It's not going to do us any good. By sunset, they'll be four and a half degrees apart and visually uh, arising. That's my word in the southeast in Capricorn. Oh, Jupiter still nearby. Saturn mm -hmm. 0.2, two tenths of a magnitude. Yeah. And if you see uh, Titan mm -hmm. way out there to the left, mm -hmm. um, that's the easiest one to see in our small telescopes when we set them up. You can see the other ones if it, the night's really dark and you know where to look. But there's also a lot of faint stars that we confuse with that. But Titan's a little, it shows white here, but it's actually a little orangish color. So it's, and with, it's with something to... like a six or eight inch telescope, you can actually see more moons around Saturn than you can around Jupiter. Yeah, we're not limited to four. Question. Tom, I sent you a graphic or a put together graphic of uh, the moons of uh, the solar system with Earth to scale. <clears throat> uh, I'll ask you, Bruce, uh, do you know how many moons in our solar system have an atmosphere? Well, I mean, a breathable atmosphere or just atmosphere? Well, Earth just have, have gas around it. There well, is, it, our moon it, doesn't, but it Titan depends. Does. It depends on how you define atmosphere yeah. and what pressure <laughs> level, but Titan is the one that has the really thick atmosphere. Yeah. Okay. None of the others do that you well, know of? Technically, our moon also has an atmosphere uh, since Apollo 11 landed on it. <laughs> so it's got the rocket exhaust, but obviously it's a very thin and tenuous atmosphere. Okay. And Io and, has, you know, all kinds of sulfur ions that it's barfed out. So you got you to define a thickness of atmosphere, I think, before you say that. But also Pluto, um, which may be reinstated soon, so... Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is going to have to get over this, but um, that one has an atmosphere that periodically freezes out. So sometimes it has an atmosphere and apparently other times it doesn't. But it's not a moon. <laughs> yeah, it's not a right, moon. Right, but atmosphere is made and it runs a it's, it's halfway to a moon. Yeah. <laughs> is there a definition in place that makes uh, moons... No, I guess it wouldn't because uh, they're not all globes like uh, the two around Mars are just little rugged rocks. Yeah, they don't all have to be a spherical, do they? Necessarily to be a moon, just have but to I... be in orbit around a parent body. Yeah, and six of our moons in our solar system are larger than the recently demoted planet Pluto, including our moon, I assume. Yes, is our moon smaller or larger than the planet Mercury? Smaller, it is smaller. Okay. Mercury is about one and a half times the radius of the moon. Okay. 
Well, we moved to the end of the month or the end of the week. The other so way we around. The moon is one and a half times the radius of Mercury, you mean, right? No. No, Mercury is bigger than our moon. Oh, okay. I thought you said the other way around. Never mind. <clears throat> okay. But is our moon as big as some of these monsters like Titan and Europa? And Titan is bigger than our moon. So is Ganymede. Okay. Pluto Titan is not... Used, Titan used to be considered the biggest moon in our system, but now I believe it's what, Ganymede? Ganymede. Yeah, Ganymede. Just a little bit larger. I see. And they found uh, bodies out in the Kuiper belt where Pluto is that are even bigger than Pluto, but yes. didn't get discovered when Pluto, right? There's about two well, or three. We're not sure any of them are bigger than Pluto yet. The, the ones that we thought were bigger than Pluto have proved to be roughly the size of Pluto. Okay. Well, Pluto at least has a Charon. Is that the name of it? It's, it's got a moon. Yeah. It's got a couple now, doesn't it? It's got I five. I say Charon. And they're even finding <laughs> asteroids with moons of their own. Yep. Well, let's go to Tuesday, gentlemen, real quick. Uh, Omicron CTA, CTI, or Mira. <laughs> oh, that's Omicron. A, that's yeah. a, micro, Omar, okay. Oh, I, I write too well, small. I know uh, Jerry gets a big kick out of so, it. Hey, Ron, Ron, just call it Myra. It's That's good. what it is, in parentheses, or <laughs> Myra the star. This is our first yep. of a, at least three or four variables. Apparently, there's variables like crazy up there, like binary systems and yeah. multiple stars. Well, Tuesday, it's time to focus in on a very long period variable star named Myra, whose mm -hmm. brightness waxes and wanes over 332 days. It's about 11 months. It should uh, peak in the brightness tomorrow, meaning Wednesday. Mm -hmm. We're on tomorrow's Tuesday. Time to enjoy as a full glow, magnitude two yeah. to three, without any optical aid, uh, meaning naked eye, I guess. Yeah, well, one thing to keep in mind, too, with this, this beautiful plot here is that there's a collection of data from mostly amateur astronomers in the AAVSO, the American Association of Variable Star Observers. It's just beautiful. Uh, the other thing you want to notice here is that what roughly six magnitude you can see with your naked eye. So if you look at the sway from six up to three, and I say up to because three is a lot brighter than six, um, it's a short time that you can actually see the star with, you, with your naked eye. Um, okay, I think it's something like 30% of the cycle, something like that. My students calculated one time at Westmont. Okay, but for the most time, you can't see it with your eye. <laughs> Really? And it's in Cetus? C -E -T yeah, Cetus, the whale, or, yeah, the whale or the sea monster. Mm -hmm. okay. And you can see that most of the observations are being made when it's at the peak or at the, the minimum. There, <laughs> right, the density right. of that graph. Yeah. And there's That's a just That's absolutely good point, Chuck. That's just absolutely beautiful data. Incredible data, you know. Yeah. And it's pronounced Myra. And I saw mm -hmm. a Messier in there among those stars a second ago. So... Uh, yeah. 73, maybe? I'd have to see the plot again, the chart. Tom, throw that uh, finder chart again. Throw those yeah. stars up again and let's that, see what we Jerry, yeah, Jerry, M77. Yeah, I was going to say 77. Yeah, that's a galaxy. But yeah, Jerry, thank you for putting these things up because this is absolutely gorgeous. It's a gorgeous uh, map of the uh, Cetus the Whale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This what is from Wikipedia. Okay. Um, Myra, you know, again, Ron is Omicron Seti. Omicron Seti. Omicron, that's how it's pronounced. Mm -hmm. That's how I say it. You know, it's, it, of course, it's a Greek letter. Well, we've gone from uh, having a variable star of the month, gentlemen, to now having four in one week, one day. <laughs> we're, we're still not through with Myra. <laughs> um, first few hours of the morning are the best time to see it tomorrow. I'm sure you'll all be up long before dawn, <laughs> looking up through the cloud cover. Actually, we've had some nice days recently. Yeah. We've also had some hot days recently that comes with it. The reason yeah. the morning is good is because the moon isn't in the sky. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? And yeah. Cetus is nice and high. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, some of its buddies up there, Menkar, which is Alpha Seti. Seti? Mm -hmm. Seti? How do you say it? C-E-T-I. Hey, Seti. Seti, Alpha, and Diphtha, which is Beta Seti, mm -hmm. over the next half a year or so, Myra will fade down. Yes. Mid-July, that works out to about, since it's mid-August, that's about 11 months. Three, three, that's right. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So long period variable star, it's a big carbon star. And this is, you know, not being occulted. It's, it's basically breathing. It's going in and out, in and out. It's mm -hmm. atmosphere. And here well, you so can see that Tom's put up where it's sort of puffing off atmosphere and it's also yeah. got a bow shock from running into um, gas clouds in its path. That's an incredible shot. That's a beautiful. Oh, is this that is that taken, taken light? in ultraviolet? Okay. Oh, you don't see it invisible. Mm -hmm. Now, its companion star is a white dwarf. We don't know of any companion star. I don't know about that. To, to me, this is a solo, a solo show. <laughs> huh. Well, I think uh, it's got a tail that says 13 light years long. That's uh, three times the distance between our nearest star, which is mm -hmm. Alpha Centauri an hour. No, Myra has a second star. It's a double star. That's why it's an eclipsing binary. It's not an eclipsing binary. Um. That's what it was said in Jerry's yeah. notes. Uh, huh. They got ultraviolet studies by NASA's Galaxy mm -hmm. and uh, the Galax uh, Evolution Explorer. <laughs> and um, has a tail of stuff. For some reason, the smaller, which is a, they think it's a white dwarf. They've concluded, according to your notes, Jerry. Yeah. Sandra's Space Telescope, the Jet Ultraviolet, uh, later. X-ray images off Myra A in the direction of Myra B. Orbiting takes 400 years. So like a lot of the stars, they're orbiting each other. Okay, yeah, I guess it's got a component B here. I've yeah, never heard of it. Know about it. It's a special yeah, I never star. had either before I researched it. Yeah, special but, um, for me because it often appeared on my final exams at Westmont. <laughs> <laughs> So does, does science know, we know that more than half the stars are binaries or multiple systems, right? They're not just single balls of gas aflame like our sun. Do they know how many variables are out there? Is it a smaller percentage, you suppose? Or do most oh, of them? All stars are variable at some point in their yeah, life cycle. It's a, it's a stage they pretty much all pass through in one way or another. They get brighter or dimmer for some different reasons. Or, or in, in different parts of their life cycle, they may be variable during that part of the life cycle where their brightness varies. Yeah. Okay. But we, if we got it down to 11 month cycle, something's going on where I, I, maybe the key is the, uh, the second star, you know, it's companion. Well, they're saying the companion is a 400 day orbit. So, yeah. well, I don't know how much we'll be able to get to in. Today, there's also a variable, a wolf Ryat star, 6,000 light years away. We don't have to go there now, Tom, Totten. Mm -hmm. But between that one and uh, something up at the teapot spout in Sagittarius, um, in nearby Libra, if the, if the waxing moon doesn't wash things out, you got some star clusters sitting in the domain of Scorpius. Uh, M6 and M7, this is mm -hmm. according to, to the portion of your talking notes, uh, Jerry, that say central region of the Milky Way. So I'm imagining you're looking up at the big white. You're looking at the teapot asterism in the yeah. uh, constellation of Sagittarius. Is that the star Shaula? Shaula is the tail of Scorpius the Scorpion. Right. So you're looking yeah, at yeah. kind of the space between that and Sagittarius. Oh, I right. see. Clusters. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Tom, could you put up the finder chart for that? Yeah. Thanks. We'll give you some time here, Tom, by reading it's 1.6 magnitude. Shaul. No, this isn't this isn't the finder chart for the center of the Milky Way. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Huh. Which one That's are we looking pretty. for? Yeah, the Where two is it? Keep going. Two there. there we go. There it is. Less south than Shaula, and they point to M7 pretty much. Well, that's toward the Milky Way, the, the central region seems to be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the region right above the, between, between Borealis, Borealis and the word cows below it, in that area, um, uh -huh. that's the center of the Milky Way. And you can't uh, see it through all the dust and um, star fields there, but that, they looked at it in infrared and radio waves to see what's there that the black hole or more is there. Now I think they're thinking there's more than one black hole and it might not be a black hole, it might be a dark matter congregation. 
Whoa, back with that again. Yeah. Don't know, but that's what they think. Wow. Not only well, don't you know, you can't see it in either case. Yeah. Well, M6 and M7 are the clusters that were mentioned, the open clusters, and they're really good, nice views in a small telescope. Mm -hmm. so and they're, dynam the they're di dynamite for star parties, right, Chuck? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If in you the see summertime. the M6 and M7 there, then Shaula is kind of down and to the right, forming a triangle with them. That's that pair of stars, also known as the cat's eye. Yeah. But I asked that. Where is the cat's eye? Can you point it out with your pointer, uh, Tom Totten? Come down, come down and down and right to the to Shaula, the tail of the scorpion. Ah. Yeah, let's go. yeah, okay, right yeah. there. See those two that are close together? Yeah. That's Shaula and Lasath, and those are often called the cat's eyes. That's right, the cat's eyes. Yeah, then, a little more than a week ago, I, I showed off M7 to a fun group uh, with Chuck, and uh, I was telling the people that the light you're seeing, you know, came from the year 600, you know, so enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> was that the cluster that was found by old man Ptolemy? Yes. It's called Ptolemy's Cluster, yeah, so he must have seen it, huh, Chuck? Yeah, and M6 yeah. is the butterfly. Yeah, which oh. most kids see as a bat. <laughs> well, I don't see any butterflies. So if you have a, if you have a well, wide, wide up, field of view telescope and you put it up there, you're going to find all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Wow. Fascinating stuff. Old man Messier, he just pointed out the brightest spots in the sky. They could be clusters, yeah. galaxies, stars. Yeah. yeah. He was yeah. looking for faint Factor. fuzzies that don't move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. We kept all his numbers. Okay. Why do I see two clouds? Is that how it looks in the center? It's actually one cloud. That's the center bulge of our galaxy, but that's uh, un unilluminated dust in front of it. Right. It's, it's solid star clouds. You're just seeing a dust cloud and blocking the middle portion right. of it. Okay. Yeah. We there's, have... a, there's a pretty famous uh, fellow at Lick Observatory in the late 1800s, uh, Barnard, who basically cataloged a ton of these dark, dark nebulae. Okay. Wow. But now we live in a barred galaxy, right? Are we looking at the bar there? Yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Is it possible to say whether we're looking side on to the bar or, or lengthwise down to the through the bar? <laughs> Do we it's, know? It's tilted just a little relative to us. Oh, it yeah. is. Yeah. And I still don't understand how bars happen, but that's all right. I never will. And a lot of these Messier objects, you know, especially 16, 62 and 19, are uh, globulars. They're not not all, but quite a few of them. Wow. Yeah, this is globular cluster central over there. Yeah, yeah. M4, for example, over just to the right of Antares, it's on the right of the screen there, is a, is one of the closest, as far as I remember, one of the closest yeah. globulars to us. Wow. Just fascinating stuff. I love this stuff. I just wish I could get it all down. Listen, yeah. uh, gentlemen, we've got about a quarter hour to go on our uh, 25th program, and I'd like to uh, switch things just to a moment for President mm -hmm. Jerry's forwarded space cartoons. We all get them. <laughs> oh. And, and if uh, Tom can find this one, we have a couple of small rocks in space slowly approaching Earth, ready to hit our atmosphere. One of them, one piece of debris says to the other, carrying a cute little bag with a congratulatory card and a gift. Hey, it's not that kind of... Uh, shower. Your shower. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> No weddings involved, no babies. Get rid of that. There you go. I love that. So uh, I guess you can send it to us. Um, I'm not sure who gets the emails. Probably you, Mr. Uh, McPartland, right? What is your yeah. emailer? The one yeah. to contact I, get, outreach? I get them too. <laughs> well, I'm talking about if people wanted to send stuff, what did they go to? SBAU.org? And that'll give any email connections. Yeah. Want. Our email addresses for the officers are on the website. Oh, it is. Okay. So Packers not, not allowed. Oh, they're so <laughs> loud. All right. Well, look, let's go to the 18th Wednesday, day after tomorrow. Mercury is going to pass 0.08. That's 800 of a degree south of Mars. They are going to, uh, what, eclipse each other? Pretty close. No, no they're not. They're just close. But boy, it's going to be really tough. The haze is just overwhelming now. I mean, yeah. I'm yeah. looking every night because we have a nice gap out there, but uh, the haze is just unbelievable, you know. 
Yeah, but yeah, Friday, when we, Friday when we went up to uh, West Camino Cielo, the sun was setting and it was orange. Yeah, really? Just from all the smoke. I actually watched the sun rise this morning um, with my bare eyes and I was fully safe. It was just, it reminded me of fires. Just reminded me of a lot of fires. Even the moon looked yellow orange last night. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Smoke's racing. But, but there they are, Mars and uh, Mercury. So Otherwise, if you screen, if you look down to the right and below, but boy, it's tough. You need binoculars. Mm -hmm. You know, you really do. Well, apparently you know, uh, the Mercury and uh, Mars juxtaposition, whatever you want to call that, is going to be gone by the time we see right after sunset. They'll be low in the sky, about one-tenth of a degree apart. You can use binoculars or a telescope uh, to better see uh, the, the magnitude 1.8. Mm -hmm. The two planets will get within um, an hour of the sun. What does that mean? HR, yeah. That Nine means don't try and look at them in the daytime. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that 20.5 degrees farther west in... Uh, Oh, bright Venus. We're going over to Venus now, which is in Virgo. Mm -hmm. And Mars and uh, Mercury uh, are in Leo. And they'll be setting about 9.30 at night. This is Wednesday evening. And then the star Porima, you can check out. Gamma, mm -hmm. Virginis. Okay, I had that before. Jupiter returns on Thursday. That B-O-O-T-A-E-S is pronounced Boatus at the top, isn't it? Is Boatus or Boatus? I just say Boatis. Yeah. Yeah. Forget the umlaut. <laughs> just pronounce both O's. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but they're different pronunciations. And I believe that's also the name of a void out there, a big one. Uh huh. You could, you could just call it Boots. Boots. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cat, right, Chuck? <laughs> Help me with my yeah. pronunciation, Mr. Boots. President. In the or middle, the, neb the nebula, the nebula. The nebula. Yeah. Nebula. Deneb means tail and Ola means of the lion. Yeah. Okay. Then below that, below the Leo word, Algeba or Algebia? Algeba. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Which I think uh, Gamma Leonis, a uh, beautiful orange star, which is a double. Nice double. Yeah. Another a beautiful double. double. Yeah. Wow. Uh, the other thing I'm just going to mention while, while Tom has this nice uh, image up um, or chart. It's notice the the slight angle the ecliptic makes. The ecliptic is passing basically through Venus and Mercury and Mars, essentially. You notice how it's just very scant. It's very slight. So these are not great apparitions for these planets. You know, as they go move away from the sun, they don't get very high above the horizon. You know, because of that slight angle. Okay. This is so what right gives us Harvest Moon too. Yeah, that slight <laughs> angle is is you get the moon hovering right. very low over the horizon for quite a while. Right, so you can do your crops all evening. <laughs> oh, uh, once again on Venus, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it brighter being on our side of the sun and we get a large crescent, or is it brighter yes. getting most mm -hmm. of the sun? It is. Mm -hmm. yeah, your first one was right. <laughs> distance <laughs> distance drives the brightness equation. That's right. <laughs> Fascinating stuff, gentlemen. We but when it's on our side of the sun, we're seeing the backside of it when it's, you know, directly. So it gets a very thin crescent. Yeah. But very large. And very right. bright. It can yeah. go over almost a two to one, three to one size range. Would you be able to see the crescent through a pair of binoculars? Absolutely. Oh, sure, sure. You got to watch out for the sun again. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah that's true. But how many times through history have people misidentified it as a UFO? Oh, a lot. lot. <laughs> Up to this date. Yeah. <laughs> Continuing. I heard, about, I heard recently about some guy, a cop, who was going back and forth on a weaving road looking at Venus, and he swore he saw the UFO go back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting stuff. Shall we do Thursday and back to Jupiter, reaching opposition? Again, That you got to yeah. explain that to me. There's still Jupiter's still on our side, but... Where is it? It's not behind us. It's not. We're not in between it and the sun. We're between it. We and are. The sun. We are. Yes. Yeah. Then that's what means opposition. It's uh, it's almost like Kubrick's lining up the three bo bo bodies of in space. Right. 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 Opposition means it's opposite to the sun in our sky. Oh well, of course. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Fascinating. Yeah. Totally 
explained it, gentlemen. Well, anyway, Jupiter reaches opposition at uh, what time of day? 5 p.m. on Thursday, the 19th of this week. So it's this week. Huh? Yeah, but you wouldn't notice anything if you look at it any night this week or yeah. around this time. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I, 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 Saturn was at opposition a, a week or two ago. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. Now, what's that black spot? What is that a shadow of? Io. Io. From a recent, actually a couple of years old, right? I think that's from Juno. Oh, yeah. okay. so so read this. Read the caption. In 2019, the Juno spacecraft caused this stunning image of uh, blah blah blah. A swatch yeah. of Jupiter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Almost Great. looks like that comet that broke up and hit one right after another. <laughs> Shoemaker Levy. <laughs> Shoemaker Levy. Remember it left. Yeah. yeah. That was 94, I think. Right. Yeah. Summer 94 in I July. Think. I wrote a paper on that in Fred Marshak's class up there at City College back then. Huh. Wow, fascinating stuff. Well, anyway, uh, Deneb, Al Jedi, and a couple other places are up there. It's in Capricorn. Mm -hmm. Now I understand it because this is the part I didn't understand. Rises, the planet rises at sunset, sets mm -hmm. at sunrise, and I'm trying to imagine doing that by being on the other side of the sun. Now that I know, at least I'm willing to admit my ignorance. You'd need to have a spacesuit on. Yeah. Think of it as, as full, like Jupiter's like the full moon. It's full Jupiter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But can we see things like the big red spot and the lines on the planet and even the moons, for that matter, if it's on the other side? Yeah. If you've got the right telescope and you've got good eyes and good seeing on dark sky, yes, you can see that. It's just that the angular size gets smaller. Plus, when it's near the sun for about, I don't know, what, 60 or 70 days, you can't you can't look uh -huh. at it. Yeah. Well, some some of us put things in perspective with our, the part of our name, uh, AU. How many AUs uh, are between us and Jupiter when we're lined up? We're one AU from the sun. How many? Right. And, and it's four? five from the sun. So it's about yeah. four right now. Four. About four. Uh -huh. And uh, beyond that, the rings planet. Um, Saturn is almost twice as far, isn't it? Almost right. the same distance mm -hmm. beyond. Eight or nine AU, yeah. And uh, asteroid Ariadna, 43. Mm -hmm. 43 yeah. Ariadne reaches opposition also. Okay. In the asteroid belt. Yeah. Yeah. Could you show the, the finder chart for that? I think it's got the picture of the moon over on one side. And Ariadne... Uh, I think I'm I'm at that finder chart. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. You you already had it. Yeah. Did I mark Ariadne on there? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's right There's, there under you know, saddle sewage. That's the approximate position where where it's not marking a specific spot. Um, the observatory software I use doesn't recognize it. Doesn't go that far down the list. So, anyway, wow. that's where you can find it. But to find it, you do what? You tell Are you asking picture, me? You look at it, you see if it moves. <laughs> yeah. Ariadna reaches uh, opposition at midnight in Aquarius yeah. near Jupiter, discovered in 1857. And I guess it was the 43rd, right? Yep. And I'm now learning. Uh, I wonder how many people know this that there are big rocks out there that we look at if you got telescopes anyway. We can't see Ariadna with a naked eye, can we? No. Okay. But we know it's there. Does it ever eclipse or uh, occult? Mr. McPartland? Sure. Really? Yeah. yeah. They'll tell you we're, we're in the path of it occulting a star, and so, sure enough, you don't see the asteroid, you just see the star go dead for a second. Depends. If it's occulting a really dim star, it might be brighter than the star, but the overall brightness will still drop. Have you been doing any of that lately? No, the smoke has really been killing me because the ones on my list this last week have been dim target stars and the smoke yeah. just wiped them out, especially with the moon shining on the smoke. Yeah. Have you taken delivery on your electric car yet, like the president did? No, it still keeps receding into the future. Well, let me know, <laughs> let me know and I'll find a lonely street. You guys can race. We'll do a little. Yeah. Practice. Okay. Nobody will hear it. <laughs> Interjecting when I said that Myra was an eclipsing bi bi uh, binary before eclipsing variable star. Yes. It's actually, I was thinking of Algol, which is an eclipsing one, and I have a, a uh, animation of the eclipsing part the, under the finder chart for it. I'll find it. Yeah. Now, is that, is that the Wolf Rayet star, or is that another no. one? No, no. Those, 
those are very violent stars. Yeah, Wolf Rayets. Thankfully, that's, it's that's Kai Signy that you're thinking of, but this is this is yeah. Algol here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, my that, God. But, and well, it shows the light curve down below what you see. And as one passes in front of the other, you see the, the, the light from the behind star uh, is taken away. And that's why Algol is a variable. Right. Not uh, Myra. I had the two mixed earlier. Okay, it is a, yeah. Myra I, I, is a binary I, star, but that's not why it's variable. Yeah. Just a, 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 an old carbon star that's pulsating. Yes. Yeah. These just happen to be tipped on its ecliptic sides so that we look at John. Yeah. Why yeah, Al Algol is called uh, often the demon star. And the word ghoul from the Arabic comes from Algol, the ghoul. Mm -hmm. But how would we have any dimming here? We've got nothing but flaming bodies going in front of each other. Why would one dim oh. the other? One's brighter than the other. Yeah. And they, they see, they hide each other. Right. One goes behind and then you can't see it for that time. Well, and this has been known for a long, long time, huh? Yeah. 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 But one of them is obviously smaller than the other. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when it comes in front of the bigger, you still see a big part of the bigger behind it. So yeah, but not all of it. Yeah. You're subtracting some of the light. Really? Mm -hmm. So the smaller ball of flaming gas somehow cuts down on the larger ball it's, of flaming It's dimmer, gas. yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Fascinating. And this is probably normal, this sort of a setup in the universe, at least in our in most galaxies. If their orbital plane is li aligned up with our line of sight, yeah, then we see a lot of these. It's also how we find planets. It doesn't have to be a star that goes in front of another star. Yeah, a planet can go in front. Right. Because the planets aren't flaming. That's what makes me confused, you know. How can something flaming? It's like seeing the shadow of a flame on a candle. Well, right? you see that the 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 orange star is um, dimmer than the same area of the blue star. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh I so see. that's why its curve is deeper. Okay. Is one of these a white dwarf, the smaller? No. No. That's not the one then. All right. Mira, uh, Myra is the one with a white dwarf. No. It's no, no, no. It's a big carbon star. Yeah. And its companion is a, is a main sequence. Wow. Fascinating stuff. Does science have uh, pictures like this of six star systems? This is not a picture. This is an illustration. Why, same thing. I understand. Yeah. That. It's an uh, illustration or an animation. Yeah. But I mean, how, does science know through mathematics how six stars can intermingle and go around each other? Yeah. There are that many, sure. four, five, and six Multiple Matter stars. of fact, when you find stars like this that orbit each other, you can measure their uh, periodicity and their distance. If you know their distance, then you can find out the masses of the stars real easy. Right, right. How would any planets be able to survive in that system? Far <laughs> out. Yeah, far <laughs> out. Far out. <laughs> well, tomorrow night, uh, we get our telescope uh, club, our, our big fix-it shop with Tim Crawford. Is that a regular thing, Mr. Totten? Yes, it is. How do people just, I guess, go on sbau.org and find out, or you want to give us a quickie idea? Baron, Baron I just want to mention, Tim wrote a comment, you know, what is the harvest moon? What is the harvest moon? <laughs> That's when we have this low, the ecliptic low to the horizon where the moon is rising, and it, it seems to hang around a long, long time. Right. It'll occur in September. Yeah. That's harvest time. Well, there's a whole bunch of moons we talked about last week. Blue moon and harvest moon and strawberry moon. Rabbit moon. Rabbit moon. Hunter's moon. Listen, uh, what are Tail we going to talk cat about? cat moon. <laughs> 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 a tail. What we might be talking about next week, uh, President Jerry Wilson? I have no clue yet. Whatever you <laughs> like. Send, send me suggestions. I'll, I'll write a blurb. I have, it's like taking a regular course at, in astronomy out at the university for me. I read yeah, those notes of yours over and over and over, and I get them down in my head, and I'm actually catching up. They're it's great gonna... pointers. They're really good pointers. Oh, yeah. Several light years away from you guys, but someday I may get in the, the same area anyway. Uh -huh. Somebody's going to need to bake a cake. You all have wives. Uh, we'll blow it out, blow out the window. The, uh, the window. The, uh, we're going to have our candles. Yeah, our candles. 
because uh, we've reached a half year point as of next Monday morning at 11 o'clock. You can okay. watch this on, you can watch this play back. Can you not, Tom? On YouTube? Yes, on, on, on YouTube. That's right. All right. Well, thank you very much. And I appreciate you meeting with us and just invigorating my life, stuff I learned. Chuck, both Toms, Jerry, oh, Bruce. Thank you. I love your wives. Stay safe. Get your third shot. All right. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye bye. I'll